Well, I think the most important aspects of science, which everybody should be able to understand and which really get to the bottom of the status of our planet, is the current energy imbalance of the planet. We now finally have really good measurements to show that there's more energy coming in and being absorbed by the Earth than there is heat being radiated to space, which is exactly what we expected because as we add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, it traps heat. Now we can measure that and what we find is the planet is out of energy balance by something between half a watt and one watt per meter squared. And that's the basis by which, first of all, we can prove that the human-made impacts on atmospheric composition are the primary cause of the climate change that we're observing. But also it tells us how much we would need to reduce these greenhouse gases if we want to stabilize the climate. And what it tells us is that other things being equal, carbon dioxide needs to be decreased from the present approximately 390 parts per million to about 350 parts per million. That would balance the, restore the planet's energy balance and stabilize the climate. Three hundred and fifty parts per million is the level, is the amount of carbon dioxide which would, if the other gases stay the same, allow the planet's climate to be stabilized. It would stabilize the planet's energy balance. Now other things may not be exactly equal. It may be that as we clean up our energy supplies that we will reduce the amount of particulates in the atmosphere. So it may turn out by the time we get back close to 350 that we'll have to fine tune that and it may be somewhat different. But 350 is the best target uh, at this time given our knowledge of uh, the climate system. I think what young people need to do is not just listen to what leaders are telling us, but look at what they're actually doing. Because the fact is that we have to move quite rapidly from fossil fuel energy sources to clean energies of the future and energy efficiency. And the only way that's going to happen is if we put a price on carbon emissions. Because the fact, it's as certain as the law of gravity as long as fossil fuels are the cheapest energy, somebody will keep burning them, even if you decide I'm not going to use them. Well, that'll reduce the demand a little bit and make them a little bit cheaper. Somebody's going to burn them. The problem is that fossil fuels don't have to pay for the damage that they do to, to human health, uh, to the environment, to the climate of the future, to the future of young people and they're even subsidized. Uh, so what we need to do is put a gradually rising fee on carbon emissions. And the money that's collected from that fee from fossil fuel companies should be distributed to the public so that the public has the wherewithal to make the changes to their lifestyle to use uh, clean energies and energy efficiency instead of these fossil fuels. That would work. We have to give the economic incentive because if there is this rising price and the business community knows it, then they're going to make the investments to find the clean energies because they want to make money. Um, so if, on the other hand, what we have, we, if we allow the government to instead uh, come up with some cockamamie schemes which still are basically business as usual, you know, the pretense that you can put a cap on things and that will somehow magically solve the problem without causing the energy prices to go any higher. Well, if the fossil fuel energy price doesn't go any higher, then it's not going, we're not going to reduce its use. The problem is that it has become very urgent. We, if we go 
even another 10 years with business as usual, then it's not practical to get back to 350 parts per million without some sort of geoengineering or something which nobody really should seriously want to think about. Um, we're already at 390 ppm and there's we can get the biosphere and the soil reforestation to soak up some CO2 but there's a limit as to how much can be achieved in that way so that means there's a limit on how much fossil fuels we can put into the atmosphere and the easily available oil and gas which will get used is approximately the maximum that we should allow to go into the atmosphere. That means that we're going to have to phase out coal. And we cannot develop tar sands and tar shale, these very dirty fuels, which are particularly carbon intensive. Well, thanks very much, because I think it's the young people uh, the 350.org, who are, have shown they can get attention worldwide. And so we really need to, to get the 350.org to pressure the political system to do what is needed. Uh, because if we do, the problem becomes actually not a problem. The, the clean energy future is a much more attractive world than uh, the current uh, polluted world.